Hello everyone, welcome back to GKI Gading Indah Youth Sunday Service. Before we start our service, let us prepare our heart, let us prepare our mind. Lord, I come to you, let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. Says I see in me will be stripped away by the power of your love. Hold me close, let your love surround. Before we continue our service, before we listen to God's word, let us prepare our heart, let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you. We are grateful for your blessings, for your guidance in our everyday lives. We thank you that you have gathered us here today virtually to have a service, to worship you, and to listen to your words. Now, please bless us, please open our ears, open our heart, dear Lord. So we're not only able to listen and to understand, but we can also uh, apply what we learn today in our everyday life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Today's uh, scripture reading is taken from Mark chapter 13, verse 1 to 8. And I have chosen a theme for uh, a topic for this. It's called living in the end of the world. It's from Mark chapter 13, verse 1 to 8. I will read it for us. Mark chapter 13, verse 1 to 8. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings? replied Jesus. Not one stone here will be left on another. 
everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what, and what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. Our scripture reading today is a little bit different to our usual readings. If you read the scripture carefully, you will find that it's about the apocalyptic times, which is talking about the end of the world. Do you guys know the movie called 2012 or The Day After Tomorrow? Well, I have watched neither of them but fully, but I have seen some scenes on the movie. In 2012, I remember that the earth, the road, it was cracked open. Earthquake was everywhere. And I think it's raining ice as well. So, it feels like the world has just come to an end. People, animals, everyone was literally dying because of these natural disasters. And if I'm not mistaken, I remember a unique scene in the day after tomorrow. Liberty statue in the heart of New York City was buried in the snow, in a big pile of snow. All the buildings were buried and it feels like there's no hope. Humans have no power at all when it comes to natural disaster. It feels like the world's gonna, it's coming to an end. Now, this kind of genre, genre, which is the end of the world or apocalyptic movies, was also found in the scripture, scripture, especially in the Gospel of Mark chapter 13. Why did Jesus talk about the end of the world in the Gospel? First of all, we have to understand who is the first reader of the Gospel of Mark. The first reader of the Gospel of Mark was the early Christians who were suffering from discrimination by Roman Empire. They were accused for doing things that they didn't actually do. There was slavery, famine, poverty, wars, many more. Apocalyptic genre, genre in the Gospel of Mark is to console the early Christians and to give them hope within God, to remind them about God's covenant of peace and shalom. It is actually quite long, the scripture, the, the science of the, the doomsday, let's say. But for today, we are going to discuss only up to verse, seven, uh, verse 8. I'm sorry. From the scripture that we read, there are two lessons at least, or two values that we can adopt, that we can learn. First, to live in faith. There are so many scary things that we can find in the scripture, especially verse 5 to 8. Starting from verse 5 and 6, Jesus told the disciples that there will be false prophets. The false prophets will purposely claiming that they were the Messiah, whilst the actual Messiah was Jesus himself. Why do they do this? Well, to gain followers, to gain money, and maybe to, feel, to fulfill their own agenda. If we move on to verse 7, Jesus said there will be wars. Kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation, government against government. It could be a civil war. So it doesn't stop at false prophets, but there will be also wars between kingdoms and governments. And hold on, because Jesus is not finished yet. In verse 8, Jesus thought that they told the disciples there will be natural disasters, earthquakes everywhere. But the last sentence in verse 8 hits me real hard. It says, these are the beginning of birth pains. It's just the beginning, guys. The war natural disasters, false prophets. They're just the beginnings of the pains. Interestingly enough, the word pain that Jesus used in Greek is odin, which means to describe the pain of childbirth. Jesus used the word odin to describe the sufferings that they were experiencing. Can you guys imagine? The pain of the childbirth will lead to a joyful moment because after mom is having the pain, the baby will be delivered and there will be joy. There will be no sorrow because the son or the daughter was finally born. It is similar to the condition that Jesus described. The sufferings that you are going to experience, but if you are being resistant, if you are being resilient, there will be joy in the end. 
it is interconnected to God's covenant about peace and shalom. If we stick to God's covenant, we'll we'll find joy. We'll find peace. Well, yes, this is the beginning, but in the end, if you're consistent and you go through it, if you can go through it, there will be joy. So the first lesson from this scripture, or the first value we found, is to live in faith that we are experiencing right now. Uh, to live in faith and believe that our experience of suffering is not the end. God has promised to walk with us, to walk beside us, to walk next to us, so He will not leave us alone. But sometimes, we're just too concerned to the problems that we have. We are not able to feel God's presence because what we see is only the problem itself. That is the problem. And we have to change our perspective, our point of view, because God can express Himself through anything. Even things that we cannot predict. Maybe our friends, family, or even strangers, we never know. So be sensitive and try as hard as you can to find God in your life because He's always there. It's just sometimes we are not able to see or to feel Him because we're just too focused on the problems. Second, to live in this sermon. Believe it or not, our world is real deceiving. The media, the news, the information that we receive, they are full with agenda. Well, not all of them, but most of the times, especially when it comes to politics or even during pandemic, they're full of agenda. Sometimes the media frightens us, how bad the virus is, how scary the damage that it makes, or hoax news to lead us to a certain opinion. It is just like the disciples in the beginning of our reading. They told Jesus how magnificent the temple is, but Jesus told them, don't, don't be deceived by it looks. It's going to collapse anyway. It's going to be destroyed. Looks can be deceiving. And he also repeats the idea when he was talking about the false prophets, about the false messiah, be careful and be discerning, be wise. Because when we live in discernment, we will be able to help others. Be wise with the information that you receive, with the news that you read or you watch. Be wise to filter it and use it. Now the question is, are we at the end of the world? My answer is, I don't know. If we talk about the science, well, there were wars, there were civil wars, there were natural disasters, and the list goes on. But for me, that doesn't matter whether the world is going to end or not, because what matters is to live your life to the fullest, to be the best version, version of yourself now. Always having fun, always playing, fooling around, and not studying properly at school is not living your life to the fullest. Living your life to the fullest is to be the best version of yourself. To be wise, to live in faith in God, to help others, to love your enemy, so many more. Be the best of you because you are good already. God has created you special, each one of you. Do you want to waste your opportunity? However, if you feel scared now, it's totally fine. It's our coping uh, or defense mechanism when we are facing an unknown situation or a threatening situation. But don't stop there. Because just like what Jesus has told us today, to live in faith, because he's always there with us, and to live in this sermon so we can help others. God bless you guys. of my soul I confide in you through all my darkest moments in you I find my peace my comfort when I'm weak I trust in you through storm and raging sea Faithful, you're my God You're the glory and the lifter of my head Your light, it fills my days It leads me in your way Forever I surrender all to you 
Between my Lord and me Lord, I live to honor you And I long to bring My life and offering Take me higher Draw me deeper I give all to be I confide in you through all my darkest moments In you I find my peace My comfort when I'm weak I trust in you to storm and rage Faithful, you're my God You're the glory of my head Your light, it fills my days It leads me in your way Forever I surrender all to you Okay guys, now is the time for us to give our offerings. Uh, just like usual, you can keep your offerings with you inside an empty envelope and keep it with you and bring it to the church later on. Otherwise, you may transfer your uh, offering to GKI Gading Indah Bank account. Now let us pray. 
We thank you, dear Lord Jesus, that we have finished our service today. Thank you that we have learned from your words. We have to live in faith and we have to live in discernment, whatever the situation is. Uh, this is our offerings, dear Lord, and we know that we, it's, it may not be as much as your blessings uh, for us, but please, please bless this offering, this offering so it can be used for your church, it can be used for your kingdom, and it can be blessings for others as well. Uh, we also want to pray for our church, GKI Gading Indah, the pastors, the elders, and all the people in, in GKI Gading Indah. Please bless their service, please bless their heart, their family, and their finance. Please bless them. We also want to pray for our community, which is youth uh, community. Please bless our education. Please bless our future and also our own family. May you please bless us. We also want to pray for our friends who may not be able to join us today here with us. Uh, please bless them who are sick, who are having trouble, who are having problems in their lives and in their family. Please bless them. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Can you guys hear the music? Well, it's already finished our service today. So I'll see you again next week. Happy Sunday and God bless you.